Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. I didn't think I was on the Mr. Turner, I think you have the honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to gather as a community and thankful that we live in a nation where we gather to discuss and consider the issues of the day. We pray for safety, we pray for wisdom, we pray for discernment for the county. Amen. Amen. Would you please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. Now time for a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. No, you don't hear. No, I don't. That's right. Uh, Chairman, I would like to, uh, in the consent agenda, five spot A spot three. I make a motion that we take that completely off the agenda. I'll second that. All right. To do that, you have to. Remove your second. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I misspoke that. Well, actually, I think we approve the agenda and then approve the consent agenda after that. So we're just approving the agenda right now. Yeah, I was, appro I was approving everything below um, five. Okay. The per uh, when we, other pres present, other businesses. But I was approving. Right. All right. We have a motion to approve the agenda. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Uh, just motion. a question. What what is this? Why are we taking it off? Um, well, I can tell you my reasonings by by wanting to. Well, have we're it. out of order. But I actually spoke too early, so we'll come back to that. We'll come back to what? To so his motion. As part of the consent agenda. Yes, part of the consent agenda. That I'd like to have him read the comments. But yes. That that was my. Uh, Do we want to like? start all over because yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if this is Monday what, what just it is, happened it is Monday morning. I know everybody approved and we didn't approve we now have, I can't hear why we approved that we approved the agenda okay uh, below five but gotcha. below the consent agenda. gotcha and I made a motion to take five spot a spot three off okay when we get to that when we get there we're not quite okay we're not there yet we'll get there uh, thank you Sorry. Everyone remove from your memory bank any errors that we might have made. <laughs> it's, it's Monday morning. It's like we, telling we the jump. jury, don't listen to what they just said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Mr. Vines, you're our only speaker. Good morning, Commissioner. My name is Henry Vines. I live at 3450 Isley Drive, Snow Camp. Uh, just like to uh, have some concerns, I wanted to speak with you today about the uh, revenue neutral rate and uh, what it seems to be meaning. Uh, one thing that I want to bring out first of all is that uh, the people that, that live in the county, uh, we pay a fire tax, volunteer fire department tax. Um, I sure hope that uh, when y'all decide to set these tax rates that y'all will reduce those tax rates down to revenue neutral as well because if you don't uh, and we get charged our, per our percent on that on that tax rate on our new evaluation it's going to be a huge increase for us in my, it's just in my case on my own what I figured is be over close to four hundred dollar increase over last year. You know, we're at eleven and three quarter cent. Other departments are even higher. So I was sure wish that y'all would consider make sure that those fire rates re reflect revenue neutral as well. The second thing is the revenue neutral rate that's that's been thrown out at forty three cent. 
I done some figures on my own uh, on one piece of property that I have, and uh, I had figured it going up at uh, about 38.8 percent. And uh, if if you figured the 43 cent on that, it would be about 107 dollar increase. So I mean. I, the ones that are going to 75 percent i can only imagine how much theirs would go up so i would just ask you to be sure that um, you take all these into account and um, because i even though i appreciate and hold y'all to it about reducing the revenue neutral rates uh we need to be sure we get that i'm running out of time okay uh, on the one that the bill was talking about with taking out the five million dollars uh, in moving it from the general fund over to uh, the capital improvement. If you remember, I stood up in front of y'all over eight months ago and asked y'all to reduce the tax rate that we had a whole lot of surplus money. You only reduced it by one cent. We're going to have that same amount of surplus because we didn't reduce it down. Um, and it was really more than five million because we were we wouldn't have to. 20 percent we we was added some to make it to the 20 percent and then got five million left over after that um, and incentives too i've talked to mr uh lashley uh we're gonna lose money on this incentive with this uh, reevaluation because of the tax rate reducing i, I know it's going to run out of time but uh, i'd appreciate y'all's consideration on this and my phone lines are always open <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Thank you, Henry. Now, Mr. Lashley. Now we get to do this. My apologies. We're looking at the consent agenda. I'm looking at the consent agenda. Uh, five spot A, spot three. I would like, I make a motion to uh, just remove that completely. And I'll second it. Discussion. Okay. What is what is this? Okay, this is the money. For everybody that's, that's looking. This is the money that's, uh, uh, this is by the discretion. Of the governing board that we can um, we were going to move 5.038 million dollars from the um, from our into the capital reserve from from our unassigned fund balance and uh, right now I would like to just hold off on that uh, just because we are uh, coming up into a budget process in which we don't really know a lot of particulars and I don't want to tie up this money and put it in an account that we can't reach when we may need it coming into this budget process because we're going to rebound. We're going to do a lot of things that we don't know uh, what monies that we're going to have. So I would like to just back off a little bit. It's not time sensitive. And um, back off a little bit until we actually know what we're going to be facing in this budget process. I didn't want to tie up any funds. I didn't want to take any funds and put it in an account in which we couldn't get to it if we needed it to you know, merge our budget because so, we really don't know. So why would we want to move over $5 million? That's what I'm asking. What, well, what is the idea behind this? If this ever comes the policy, to The policy is that we, uh, anything over 20%, and this, uh, Ms. Evans, you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but I think it's 22.73 that okay. we're above. So the 2.73% is going, and that's the $5 million. That's correct. Uh, that's above our 20% threshold. Okay. Uh, basically what we want to do is we can move that money over there at, a, at another t at, a, at a later time if we wish, mm -hmm. uh, but as of right now, I'm just looking at the budget process, and I think that there's some money that we may need to use. Okay. And uh, if if we get to the through the budget process, let's say it's April or May, and and that didn't happen, I, I'm not I'm not saying that we can't spend this money on it. I'm just saying let's hold off until we get a better idea of what our budget's going to look like because this next budget is going to be a monster. We have to rebound. There's a lot of things we have to do. I just didn't want to take that money away and stick it in an account and us not be able to get a hold of it. Mm -hmm. At a later time, if we so choose, if this governing body decides that that's what they want to do, I'm okay with it. I would just like to wait until we get a little better idea of what our budget's going to look like mm -hmm. in, in May and June. Okay, it's just a whole lot of money, and yeah. it's such a really uncertain time for our citizens. Right. I think it's always good to ask questions to understand why well, uh, and what so our rules are, so to speak. To leave you to your concerns, uh, there's Ms. Evans, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we had this conversation, like $10.2 million is currently sitting in that account currently. Mm -hmm. uh, so we already have $10.2 million in there, so it's not like it's 
going going away. And we could, I just, just wanted, didn't want to throw that $5 million in there. And then when we get into our budget process, we need it and we can't get our hands on it. One more question. This account that's just got this amazing amount of money in it, sure wish I had one. What is this account usually for? What are some of the things that would be under this account as far as you would spend money out of this account for? Absolutely. So once funds, um, and Commissioner Lashley is correct, once funds are moved over into a capital reserve fund, it, those funds become dedicated for capital projects. For the county? For the county. Okay. Not so, the schools? Not the okay. schools. This is the county's portion. Um, we have our own fund. There's the county fund, the schools, and then ACC. We are talking about what's in there for the county. Those funds would then be used, they could be used for capital projects, whether that be um, additional HVAC projects we've had in the past where there had been an emergency request. We've moved money from those funds to to a county operating fund so that we could buy a new HVAC system. Um, they can be used for future projects. We could use a portion of those for the upcoming uh, courts building, things of that nature. Okay, and the like Board of Elections, the bank we bought and mm -hmm. we're spending more money on to remodel than we are paying for it. That's that kind of that's fun. that kind of project. Okay, I'm good. Just just asking. I'm well, just one of those nosy people that <laughs> I'm gonna always ask. That's a good thing. Well, there's another there's another opportunity there too. And if we allow the fund balance to get higher, we've got a 20 percent target on the fund balance right now. We're retain that much in the fund balance. If we were to let it get higher, maybe perhaps at 25 percent, which would be a three month reserve, we could in fact see our bond rating increase which would help us when we need to borrow so Mr. Carter did you second his motion I did <laughs> just clearing up the, yes. the back log there any other discussion only discussion I have is I totally agree oh, excellent with what? With this motion. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm good. Okay. Jeez. All in favor of the motion to uh, remove item 5A3, which is the budget amendment for the capital reserve. All in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. Now, now to we come back to the amended consent agenda. Second. Got ahead of you, John. Thank you. <laughs> Which one made the motion? I did. All right, and you made the second, is that correct? All right. Other than removing 5A3, uh, all that are in favor of the consent agenda signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. uh, any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. That gets rid of all that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, for those that are looking on the agenda, we're down to item 6A, uh, and okay. Van de Vision, is that the correct? Van de Visser. Van de Visser. Yeah. Please. Mm -hmm. Sorry about the name pronunciation. Okay. That's okay. I get that a lot. Uh, State your name for the, for the folks and, and your position, please. Yes, I'm Grace Vandevisser, Executive Director for the Alamance County Visitors Bureau. And I'm going to move this up here. Um, and so today um, I'm here to uh, with a proclamation for 2023 uh, Year of the Trail. And just to make sure, um, Commissioner Lashley, um, you would like me to go through this? Or would Why you don't like we to do this? Why don't we commissioners step down with you because I hope someone's going to be taking pictures. Where's Thomas when you need him? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like me to read this or would you like to well, carry Why don't you read it okay. and, uh, and then we'll come join you for photographs okay. if you like. Absolutely. Thank you. This is our Alamance County Board of Commissioners proclamation for the 2023 year of the trail. Whereas Alamance County's natural beauty is critical to its residents' quality of life, health, and economic well-being, and whereas the trails that span across our community are an integral part of the recreational and transportation possibilities of our area and promote an enjoyment of scenic beauty by our residents and our visitors. And whereas the parks, greenways, trails, and natural areas in our community are welcoming to all and provide a common ground for people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds to access our rich and diverse natural, 
cultural and historic resources. And whereas Alamance County's natural assets and resources are integral to disaster recovery and resiliency to climate change for future generations. And whereas Alamance County's nature trails include the Haw River Trail, which is part of the Greater Mountains to Sea Trail, offering approximately 40 miles of trails within Alamance County. In addition, numerous trails are located throughout our city and county parks, along with the greenways available in our communities for our residents and visitors to enjoy. And whereas trails offer quality of life benefits to all as expressions of local community, character, and pride, as outdoor workshops for science education, as tools for economic revitalization, as free resources for healthy recreation, accessible alternative transportation, and sites for social and cultural events. And whereas programming opportunities will be provided to include learning about hiker safety, trail section spotlights, monthly hiking programs on local trails, and special events throughout the year. All of these opportunities are made possible in collaboration with the recreation departments throughout Alamance County and partnerships with the Mebane Trail Rangers and the Haw River Canoe and <coughs> Kayak Company. And whereas the North Carolina General Assembly designated 2023 as the year of the trail in North Carolina <coughs> to promote and celebrate the state's extensive network of trails that showcase our state's beauty, vibrancy, and culture. culture. And whereas North Carolina is known as the Great Trail State. And be it further resolved, Alamance County Board of Commissioners do by, hereby proclaim 2023 as the year of the trail in Alamance County and commend its observance to all people adopted this day, the 6th of February, 2023. Do we have a motion? Motion for to second. approve. Second. Motion to have a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. It's unanimous. May we come join you? Absolutely. And I want to thank all of you for having me here today to um, be able to uh, present this. Before you sit down, I'd just like to tell you, I just recently became part of the Piedmont Triad Regional Council. I finally got the words right. And, um, <laughs> and it's amazing because they talked about this last week and uh, they were showing um, city or town of Bermuda Run. Mm -hmm. I now know that exists. They got big bucks from federal dollars for stuff just like this. Um, they was talk I was watching PBS I went over at this retreat last week um, I'm watching like Channel 4 that's what we know PBS as about this North Carolina thing and it showed this 13 mile trail that went through Spindle and Rutherfordton mm -hmm. and it was paved and it was for walkers runners skateboarders bicycles everything and it just went right parallel along the railroad tracks there at their towns and the tourism that it brought to these small little areas is amazing because you know we hear mental health all the time well mental health is not sitting in a chair in front of a psychologist or a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist, whatever. It's not just that. Mm -hmm. It's getting outdoors, breathing air, because I dare say our park saved a lot of people during COVID, because right. you could get out and breathe air instead of staying locked up in your house. So I think the more we can do for that, for our county, because we've got so much land, our grant writers for the Parks and Rec have been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to really look at stuff like that, because um, there's a lot of different things we can do to bring money to our county that are all about well-being. So I appreciate what you're doing. Thank well, you so much. Thank you. And we couldn't do what we do um, without our park staff, without our um, all of our recreation staff, and the many volunteers that oh. do get out on our trails and work throughout our community. Yeah. Um, and we'd like to see some some hard surfaces through some of these trails because I know not every some people trip, fall, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, and we just need to always think about that because they just add so much to your community. They really do. We are very grateful to have what we have. It's Absolutely. beautiful. And I'm going to ask that Ms. York and Mr. Baker join us with this photo op. Mr. Baker has done so much <clears throat> for this county, particularly when he was uh, Director of Recreation and Parks and so forth. And Ms. York, you as well, please. And we just started, you will start seeing these Year of the Trail um, promotional um, pieces for the Great Trail State. And this one says Alamance County. I will leave them up here for anyone who'd like to um, but you will see that um, throughout the year.
not sure about the photographer. He started out here and he got down to here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to talk with Scott later and find out what he's doing. I'm trying to be all artistic. <laughs> We are now down to item number 6B, if you're keeping score. <laughs> uh, the new line sale in Richard. Mr. Hill, thank you. So today we'd like to um, come in front of you uh, with a request for some funding of the new cell that needs to be uh, built at the landfill. Uh, Mr. Uh, ben Clawson from Municipal Engineering is here today to answer any technical questions you may have. Um, Ben's group and us have been at this for about 18 months, um, getting all the engineering done for the new 10 acres. Uh, the, the project itself is more than just a new sale. It also includes the formal elimination or closure of our C and D landfill. That's something that's required by North Carolina law. And the funding for that part of the job is actually already in place through our restricted mm -hmm. funds. And Susan can get into any and all questions about this. But that money by, by law has to be put away as the landfill is utilized over years. Um, the other parts of this job are a new borrow pit. A borrow pit is exactly what you think it is. It's a place to borrow dirt. But we have to form a new one to use that dirt or that clay to close the C and D, but also going forward with the construction of the new cell. And then there is the part of a new access road. That is absolutely not required in this project. However, it is the best time to do so. As the landfill expands over time, the road that we use for entry now will be gobbled up by expansion. So we thought this was the perfect time to go on and build a, a new road that would allow us to access our leachate uh, tanks, also our new borrow site, but get ahead of the curve of where we're going to need road several, uh, a new road several years down the road, cheaper now than later. So that's the four main components of what we're asking funding on. Total price for all this is $7.384 million, of which, like I said, about a million is already in our restricted funds. The rest of it would come out of our unrestricted most recent audit is about twelve and a half million dollars in that fund um, so there's more than adequate money to take care of it any questions about just the baseline of what we're trying to do we did go through a formal process this is a formal quote we had about um, 13 or 14 companies that showed an interest seven of those actually came to a mandatory pre-bid and three of those companies bid. There's a copy of that in your packet that shows the, uh, the pricing from each one of them. We feel considerably lucky. Two years ago when we started this process, we were estimating 375,000 an acre. So 10 acres would be just less than $4 million. Then the world went crazy with COVID and increased pricing. So we were really scared that this price was going to come in very high. I was up in Buckham County a couple months ago, and they were building a 10-acre sale, and they were spending $1 million an acre. For so, trash. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. That amazes me. Yeah. It's gotten to be a very trash. expensive process. And it's been pushed recently the last couple of years because of the cost of diesel fuel, the cost of labor. Anything you're constructing has really been hit hard. And uh, these projects are very, are very much pushed along by diesel prices. And that has not relented. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to make a long story short, 
Baxter Johnson was the awardee. Excellent company. They are the guys that helped us through the liner repair. Just a wonderful company. We couldn't have chosen a better group. They came in at about 400,000 an acre. Wonderful news. Wonderful news. So when we look at the pricing, we've got uh, the new base bid for the access road and the borrow site is just less than $2 million. The um, base bid for the closure of the landfill, capping that old C&D landfill, is about a half a million dollars. And the, pro the cost of the new uh, line landfill is about $4 million. So that's a total with a contingency of 5%, which we do not plan to, to use. But we want it there. Whenever you're digging underground, you don't quite know what may happen. So we felt it to be right to put a contingency. So total bid is set just less than $7.4 million. That's a breakdown there. Bruce, if you could throw up the, um, the site. I don't know if we have a pointer in here or not. But this is your new sale. Everything you see in green is the 38 acres that we've been using since 1993. <coughs> we are in the last 12 months of capacity there. Is that where the liner repair? The liner repair, Ben, you want to show on point, it's right there at the bottom of the green. It's right there. That's yeah. that liner repair that you saw. That's now been covered up and is about 10 or 15 feet high. I have a corner here if you want to borrow one. So you want to borrow a corner? If you got something, you want to we'll work? work on the TV. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. Okay. How, when did we start with. See, I used to go sledding at Austin Quarters. It 1993, was so 1993. You used to go hunting at Austin Quarters. Okay. Well. <laughs> buzzards and seagulls don't fly on the same day. I learned that. Um, okay. This right here, 1993. How much longer are we predicting that that area will be done? Less than a year. Okay. And we've got, what have we got to add to it? So we're getting ready to build a 10 acre sale, which you see in red. That's called Phase 6 1A. 10 acres, life expectancy 10 years, based on present day yeah. compaction and volumes. Is the, we don't get like construction stuff like we met with Meridian. Yes. Uh, does CN that come in there? Will that change if they go in? We've already been doing that for four years, four plus years. Will that change once? Okay. No. Okay. So if we have all those areas there, what's the life expectancy of that landfill incomplete? Okay. You see 1A being built. That's mm -hmm. about 10 years. Just to the north of that is 1B. That'll be the next six acres we do. And then you go further to your left. There's another, I think, 12 or 13 acres there. And then part of what you cannot see going further is additional properties that we have, we own, and we will permit them. The, the answer to your question is about 60, 65 years. Okay. Where's 54? Is Probably it 54 to the left? 54 would be going up okay. um, north. I, I guess it's north. I don't have a thing on the graph. Okay. It would be going east. Okay. So I'm just curious because we were probably surprised that we filled it up as much as we have without because I tell you we Americans got lots of stuff and we well, dump it anywhere. Well an index of that is when I went down to the landfill seven years ago um, a good high volume day was about 350 tons. We regularly do six to seven hundred. A day. A day. And that's all built into the new permits that Ben and them have helped us with because we had to readjust our permits for, for more tonnage. That number is not gonna go down. As Mevin grows all this infrastructure in the southern part of the county, it's, it's gonna to continue to go up. But the estimate I gave you on 10 years is assuming higher volumes going up and that our compaction does not get better. In other words, we try to paint you a worst case scenario. It's very possible we may get 11, 12 years out of that sale. Should we, um, just spitballing here, mm -hmm. should we consider increasing our tons that we charge for? The tipping fee? Tipping. Well, it's something I'll be talking to the county manager with. We'll look at that as um, part of the budget process. Yeah. Um, last year, we asked for a 5% increase. We went from 40 to 42. Inflation at 10%. And I told the board at that point that we wanted to try to come in low and that we readjust that coming into our 
conversations about the new budget. Um, diesel fuel has not gone down. Labor has gone up. You don't have electric packing big things out there yet. You have what? You don't have those big electric packing things that go back and forth. <laughs> Are you talking about compactors? Uh -huh. Yeah. No, we uh, <laughs> we have one compactor that's been in place for some years. Okay. But that. Uh, is really not something that's going to get into this conversation about longevity. It's ridiculous. Or yeah. Yeah. So cost continues to go up. The cost of operations, the regulatory concerns that we have, um, is mind-boggling. I mean, the conversations we have now, we weren't even having ten, uh, two years ago. PFOS, GNX. Um, it's going to get expensive. I don't want to get into details now, but one of the conversations we're going to be having with the board as we go forward is there are some regulatory things that we've got to start considering. Not that we've done anything bad, but the EPA and the states coming back and saying we want to take a look at certain things that we haven't done in the past. So, uh, oops, I hope that's clear. Where we've been, where we're going to go. Now, that little cell 1B. Um, red dotted lines. That particular property we were hoping to incorporate in this bid. We could not because there's a small wetlands issue about the size of this room. And we had the Corps of Engineers come down and take a look at it and they formally listed it as a wetlands, which means we actually have to buy the right to remediate. We've already spent that money. We've already spent about $200,000 on that water the size of this room. But DEQ would not approve the plan, the civil engineering. And because we have less than a year life in our existing sale, I couldn't wait any longer to incorporate that extra six acres. So we took it out, talked to the county manager, she agreed, went on and quoted our 10. That buys us 10, acre, uh, 10 years. We'll go now forward on mediating that wetlands issue. So when the time comes and my successor is in front of you, they can go on and use that extra six acres. When you say you spent about two hundred thousand, because Richard, I just don't know. That's why I'm asking. Two hundred thousand dollars on wetlands. What What are you doing so, to, for two hundred thousand dollars? Ronnie can get into this probably more than I can, but you can't simply disturb wetlands. Right. You had to buy the right, if you will, to mediate, <clears throat> and then you had to go, in our case, through DEQ, a uh, formal process of doing all the things that you had to do, and it's for good reason. You don't want to put a landfill in an area that can sink, because that could cause you liner problems in the future. It's just an expensive, time-consuming affair to go through. So you Excuse already me. know that, but you have to get the you have to pay to get the rights to know that. Yeah, every developer has to do that. Yeah. Um, whenever they do a property, I mean, you've right. seen some of the mitigated, you know, pools of water and yeah. stuff like that. So anybody who runs into a, a a wetland has to mitigate that through the state. It's just a natural process. And just to speak from what he talked about. You know, when Brian was here and other folks were here, we have a really good landfill with a longevity mm -hmm. compared to many, many other counties. It's one of our biggest assets for our county citizens. Mm -hmm. um, people would wish to have 67 years worth of stuff, and so they've done a really good job. The bid process went really well. We got a, a much lower bid than we thought, and um, kudos to Richard and his crew on that. So. Again, we're just here to, to approve that aspect. Mr. Mr. Hill, what's the estimated time to complete the construction of cell one? 180 days from award. That puts us like into July. We're hoping with some good weather, and Baxter Johnson is very aggressive. They're ready to start as soon as we sign the contract. I'm hoping we get this done at the end of June. Okay. But that's all determined by weather. Because really. this is the only option once the current cell. We're out of space. There's nowhere to go. Okay. And again, when we look back when we started this two years ago, we had plenty of time, but DEQ has held this up for a year. Okay. And I just couldn't wait any longer. All right. <coughs> we just, uh, it's too close. Okay. Any other questions? Just one, is, is there, look, I can't believe I'm 63. It got here really quick. Mm. And you're saying about 60 plus years. I'm telling you, just like that with the way trash goes and comes and I mean it's it's just the stuff that we have we see it everywhere um is there any vision as far as another possible area that could even be another because we've had Swepsonville area 
And I mean, how does how do you go about finding stuff like this? Because I know land <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> goes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, siding a landfill is an incredibly <laughs> difficult thing today in yeah. today's world because of cost of land and all the environmental concerns and the public mm -hmm. input and all that goes back to your Meridian conversation. There's a reason they want to buy an existing. Um, we're lucky enough to have a lot of land. I was sitting in a SWANA meeting a couple months ago up in Asheville and the head of DEQ said if you take a snapshot of landfills and you forward 15 years from now, if there's no new construction or expansion, there won't be a landfill east of Raleigh active. This is becoming a huge issue with the growing municipalities of Raleigh, Durham, Greensboro, Charlotte. Okay, that, that's my next question. If we don't have any kind of zoning in our county mm -hmm. and there is a prospect of something and they check all the boxes like some things do with the state of North Carolina, does that mean this county cannot say no? Well, I think you're, or getting the citizens. A, you're getting to a legal conversation, That's but, right. but this board, um, the county has the option of approving and disapproving that okay. type of, okay. whether it be a transfer station or a new landfill or whatever. Okay. Always thinking later. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Any other questions? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank, Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Hill. <coughs> Hook. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so this morning what I want to talk about is an emergency services center. We talked about this in the fall when I uh, came to you to talk about um, the BD building, the building on Plantation Drive, and so I want to finish up that conversation. So basically, um, the emergency services center is an opportunity to house several uh, areas together. The Alamance County 911 Center, Burlington Police Department 911, um, Emergency Management, Fire Marshal's Office, and some of EMS administration. Okay. Cannot get it to move forward. What am I doing wrong? Okay. So what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about the 911 centers. Um, so, you know, right now what you have is Alamance County is your main 911 center. That is the, that is where all 911 uh, calls come into. Burlington also has a 911 center. So if you're a citizen, you call into Alamance County or you call into 911, it's answered here. And if they find out that you're a resident of Burlington or Graham or the incident is in those jurisdictions, that call gets transferred to Burlington. Burlington does dispatch for Burlington and Graham. Alamance County does dispatch for everybody else, which would include your county 911, all of your other municipalities, their police departments, um, EMS, fire. So Burlington does Graham and Burlington police and uh, fire. So what you've got by having two separate systems is there are some communication barriers between the two. Some of that comes from the physical difference and then also there are two different radio systems being used by the two centers. Um, Would you tell us what the, I, I think we know, but tell the audience what those two systems are and the variances. So for Alamance County 911, our, we are using them a Viper radio system, which is the state-supported radio system. City of Burlington uses Tron, which is part of Guilford County, and since Graham has moved over to Burlington 911, they are using it as well. So the ability to have the two areas co-located um, would allow some response um, in escalating incidents and also multi-jurisdictional incidents. What happens is as a, an incident grows and there's a need for more and more response, there's a need for better communication between Burlington and Alamance County. Because remember, Burlington's doing fire and 
fire and police for them, we're doing EMS. And once they need EMS, they have to contact the Alamance County. But also once they need other jurisdictions to come in and do mutual aid, that goes back to Alamance County too. So when, it, when an incident grows, there becomes a lot of conversations and communications back and forth. The ability to share, be in shared space, helps with that because if you're in a shared space, you're, you're sensing in the room that things are building and you're able to hear what's going on around you. Now, to resolve that issue, we would both need to be, that is, Burlington Graham versus the rest of Alamance County, we'd be on one single system, which would mean you could call 911 and not have to have the current transfer. Is that correct? So that is correct. It, yes, that is correct. What we're talking about is we would have a shared software system, but this is not going to take care of the radio system. That so would be what we'd like to get to. Hypothetically, if I live in downtown Burlington, call 911, have a medical emergency, need an ambulance. Uh, I call 911, which is our current Viper system with the county, then they have to transfer that call to the con system with Burlington in order to get a response. I know that to be factually correct. Um, if we combine the two systems mm -hmm. into the statewide Viper system, there would be one call, no delay, and the Burlington police officers could hear the communication, whereas now they cannot on our 911 Viper uh, and that simultaneously, Alamance County cannot hear the con system because they're an entirely different radio system. So the question I have is, mm -hmm. with this combination, why not have one system which will save lives and eventually cut down the cost? So that is a great question, and that is not one that the county can answer independently. So that would require Burlington um, having Burlington making the decision that they want to go to a new radio system. What we're saying is this: if we could co-locate, gets us in the first step of at least we've communi we've increased our communications between the two centers. In that you're in the same building. In that we're in the same building, and um, it also it it also. It increases their ability to communicate with each other. It does not solve the radio system, which is a completely different system. So Burlington would um, have to make the decision that they want to move over to the Viper system. So, you, you. so we think by putting everybody under one roof, that's going to influence Burlington to totally flip on their Viper what they've already been sold on with your I remember so being I'm not on, saying no no, no I'm <laughs> saying that's what it sounds like from here mm -hmm. because um, being under the same roof don't make you agree mm -hmm. I mean it's just the way it is and I, 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 I don't know I just me and Bill can be on the phone with two different people and just because we're on the phone with two people don't mean we know what we're saying mm -hmm. because we're sitting beside each other yeah. I, I'm just asking just asking and so it's not it does not it does not force Burlington to make a change. It does not encourage them to make a change. But what we hope is that it, there are increased communications between the two centers. The other pieces that we have going on is that both their center and our center are at capacity. So as the community grows, we're not going to be able to grow our 911 center in the space that we're in right now. They are at capacity as well. And then the other piece of it is that we, we have to have a backup 911 center. We have something of a backup center. Right now, our backup center is in the conference room at FJC. That's those tables mm -hmm. that you see around the edges. So if we were to need to go and use that backup center, it is not immediately available. We have to go in and do some setup, so there is a delay in that. If we were to be able to relocate, then we have the opportunity to have a 911 center that would be immediate backup center that would be immediately available. 
I have a question. Sure. Did that answer your question? No, I'm just is Burlington on board with being under the same roof with the county? Yes. We have yeah. had lots of conversations okay. with Burlington. Do they, they pay are us? Under, they are on board with being under the same roof. They're not on board with combining systems. Well, that goes against their whole point of having them under the same roof. <laughs> Do, do they uh, do they help in um, pay, paying for this uh, paying for this center? So they are not helping in paying for the center. No, they are paying for their own expenses in their own location right now. Mm -hmm. We're paying for our own expenses in our. In that doesn't our seem very location. efficient. Well, doesn't seem very efficient at all. And I don't understand why bill. Burlington wants to swim against the tide. I don't understand that, but I think I know why, and I think I know who to go talk to about this too. Well, Bill, the money is coming in from the state to yeah. pay for this. I mean, yeah. It's not Burlington money and county money. It's $15 million. $15 million from the not, state. But that's not all of the... Well, under one we'll plan get to that. Be. But I, got, I do have a question. Uh -huh. We have MOUs with the surrounding counties to provide backup service. Are they all on Viper? except for Burlington and part so of Gilbert. everybody is on Viper except for Graham and Burlington. Any reason why Graham decided to do this? Sheriff, you have any idea? I have no idea. I know how to go talk to about that too. I have talked to several of the, excuse me, the uh, Graham uh -huh. City Councilmen and they are concerned about their safety of the, uh, the citizens, their, uh, their officers, because once they leave that con system with Burlington, their radios are pretty much useless at that point. They cannot communicate with Alamance County, the other municipalities. It's just a dangerous situation. So, um, commissioners, I would encourage us. Well, let me back up before I even make that statement. A little, I'm bit, getting further, ready to make. A little bit further back. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we use the $15 million grant and purchase the property, mm -hmm. that does not mandate us to do anything with Burlington. Is that correct? So um, the original grant, it did talk about co a co-located 911 right. center, which would include bringing Burlington into it. It does not mean anything about the radio systems at all. Correct. but it. But Burlington is telling me personally, they just don't want to spend any money. They want us to move <coughs> us, them, into our new center, mm -hmm. but they don't want it to cost anything to Burlington, <coughs> and they're not willing to even discuss it at this point. So if we can uh, get into no if we can get into the numbers, we can talk about ways that we might could do all of it for the fifteen million. But yes, I, I, I agree with you, and that's what we've heard as well because they feel like the $15 million grant, part of the main reason was to co-locate 911 and they feel like that should be where the money should go to first, is then to cover that co-location. Then why not take this step to make it safe for law enforcement, our citizens, and save lives? And I believe that they have put aside $10 million of ARP funds for um, economic development. I would suggest to the city of Burlington officials that they take some of that $10 million and maybe come be partners with the county. There will be a stronger unit and there will be funds that can be used to for the safety and security of their citizens. Do we not think that Burlington and Graham citizens are not safe? They are I mean, not safe. It they, sounds like they're doing their thing and we're doing our thing. And as long as the thing is getting done, that's all that matters because I'm hearing you say that you're calling this person and you may have to transfer to that. That's a second or two. It ain't like hold on, you're running down the hall for 10 minutes to get somebody. I, we're, I think we just got to be careful here. It's just another millions of dollars mm -hmm. that we're wanting to spend after what just happened with our citizens. We just need to be real careful not to feel like because we've gotten this grant or whatever you want to call it, that we have to be pushed into doing this as well. This was probably way before. I remember when um, Amy was the chairman talking about Burlington switching over to Viper and, I don't, and then Graham coming on and there wasn't any discussion, if I'm not mistaken. And it, the key is open discussion. It's a shame Burlington's not here to talk with us about this at the same time. And um, 
you know, that, that's their money to spend what they want to on it. I'm just saying, and ours is the same way. But well, the county can't carry everybody. It seems Burlington made a short sight and this guy's decision here. Well, they may be saying the same thing about us. Well, that's okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, oh, both I can, sides. I can prove the reason. I can prove the things that I want. They can't. Okay. Well, I was just going to suggest that perhaps we try to arrange a joint session. Absolutely. With the city have manager, a conversation the city about manager this issue. Be in this, mm -hmm. both the city manager of Graham and Burlington, I surely would like to talk to them. Because it's kind of not real fair us sitting here talking about them, <laughs> like, you know, they're doing all this wrong, and, and we're sitting here wanting this. I mean, you, you can't really get anything <coughs> done unless you're all in the room at the same time, because we may be missing what it is that they have, you know, reservations about, and we don't need to assume anything. Right. Let me the point, one everybody's thing. safe. That's uh, all that matters. First off, this is not seconds. I know it myself and a number of neighbors <coughs> that have... Um, you call 911. You live in the city of Burlington, and you do, and I do. I do. Um, and you have to explain who you are, the address, what is the emergency. Oh, by the way, we've got to convert you to the con system with the city of Burlington. You have to repeat everything. In a stroke situation, that can be life or death, and it is. And it's yeah. not seconds. It's minutes. Well, I'm sure minutes. every call is totally different based on what that clearly, call is. Clearly. But um, I don't want us to think that the every call is like every call because every human being is totally different with whatever symptom they're calling in for their emergency. I just think we all need to be at the same table talking about mm -hmm. something this kind of money because we need to bounce off each other for this and come to some kind of agreement on what would be best for the citizens. And I'm citizen. in total agreement that stroke victims are treated very, very <coughs> differently than a broken leg or arm yeah, or something. They should be. They have no argument with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I just think it's not pertinent to this argument. So I will, uh, and to your point, we have been having those conversations back and forth with Burlington, and Burlington is very interested in the co-located center as long as that there are funds to cover the entire cost of gotcha. it. I think they're looking at it the same way we are. We've got $15 million to get it done. They want it to get done under the $15 million. So they don't have to increase their budget for any additional relocation expense. I think we want the same thing. So I think we're on the same sheet of music, so to speak. We just got a problem with a piece about actually communicating between the two systems. Which is extremely important. It is. It is it's critically important. It's, it's probably the number one priority. Uh, I know the sheriff. I, I got a like feeling all of us have had conversations with various members of the city council. I know I have, and I know they're interested in discussing it. I just think it would be a good idea for us to have a, a joint meeting and, and actually let, get all this out on the table and figure out where we can go. Well, I just know that our county deputies, <laughs> they, they always seem like the people want to lean on them you know, if they were part of the, if we were all part of the same group, and we, you guys could communicate, that actually should make the deputies and the county feel good that they have a backup. And it should make Burlington and Graham feel great that they have a backup just in case things go awry. Well, they do now, that. but it's just not as convenient. Yeah, just don't understand that. Convenience can be life or death. Mr. Sheriff Johnson, would you like to address that issue? I'll just say this, every second counts when it comes to life or death. And, uh, you know, we've had met several chases that have gone from the county into the city and the city uh, to us, and it's, hard, it's tough communicating. And every second makes a big difference. Can I just clarify the safety issue for a second? Um, if there is a need for medical care, the county is the one who is mm -hmm. dispatching for EMS. So if you're in Burlington and you call 911, we will send an ambulance to you without that transfer. I just want to be clear about that. I don't want our residents feeling like they're not being served. That's the ambulance not. is the ambulance. It's not Burlington ambulance, <laughs> Snow Camp ambulance, right. Graham. It's the ambulance. Right. Now so that is county? not what happened in, for an individual in my household. Mm -hmm. In fact, I called 911 with a medical emergency ongoing. Uh, I went through all the who I am, the address, the emergency, oh, we've got to, and they then transferred me to the Burlington system before an ambulance or a fire engine or anything else was dispersed. Mm -hmm. So I know that to be factually correct with an individual in my household. 
Now, can we purchase the property and then have the discussion with Burlington and resolve some of these issues? So I, I think that that is my recommendation because even without all of these being resolved, we still have the issue of we're at capacity at our locations and we do not have a backup center that is functioning in the way it should. We have a backup center, but it is not something that is immediately available if we needed to utilize it. So and this would give us that opportunity. So our existing center then would be back up to the new center if mm -hmm. something were to happen, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move into the money part of it. Um, so the Emergency Services Center, you, you've already talked about this. The state give, did give us a $15 million award um, for this center. The hopes were to be de able to put emergency management, emergency management storage, emergency operations, fire marshal's office, some EMS administration, and again, the Alamance County 911 and Burlington 911. We engaged with mission critical partners to start planning for this. And when we did, we looked at new construction and that price tag was around $56 million. 911 centers are not cheap centers to build so they are they cannot be compared to regular commercial building or um, residential building very expensive and would you explain why I, well, I think we know it has to do with all of the communications infrastructure that you have to plan for technology the technology and the bulletproofness it. of part of the, the hardening of the structure exactly. mm -hmm. So since um, building a building was out of the question, we went and looked for existing buildings. We were able to find this building at 780 Plantation Drive. This building is a close to 70,000 square feet. About 28,000 of that is warehouse space and it has been leased to the State Emergency Management Center. Um, there is also 41, almost 42,000 square feet of office space. About 8,000 of that has been leased. So we would be looking at purchasing the entire building, maintaining the lease, and then utilizing the rest of the building. So we wouldn't have the whole building? We are not going to have the whole building. So this would not, this would not um, include storage for emergency management equipment. Now but we'll it would own the there. entire building. We will own the whole building, but we will maintain that lease of all the warehouse space and the 8,000 square feet of office and therefore space. have income from the state yes mm -hmm. thank you I'm how, how long yeah. is the lease the lease is a 10-year lease it was just signed in the fall and then there's two options of five-year extensions on the end of it so it could be up to 20 years it's their option it's yes. whose option yeah. is it it's their option i have been told too that there's land available if we wanted to look at some point in the future of acquiring land that is either in the same proximity or adjoins it Mm -hmm. where we could add on space to I know we've been looking at a regional uh, area to store regional emergency management equipment mm -hmm. and that would give us a place to look at that just out of curiosity is the area that we would be able to use is it um, are we going to grow into it or are we already grown out of it no it leaves us room for expansion So we engaged with Mission Critical Partners and Schrader Group and uh, to complete programming. Basically, they looked at the building. They, we did exercises on planning for how we could fit in the building, would we fit into the building, and the findings were the building sufficient for all of our program areas and it does allow for future growth. Um, there are some cost savings opportunities because there's existing furniture and there's some amenities that are already in there that we would utilize and not have to build. Um, it's centrally located in the county and it gives us easy access to 4085. The building is in good condition and it's typical for commercial office construction. And what that means is that the building is rated at category two instead of four, which would be what a critical infrastructure building would be. So it will require some hardening to the structure as we go through the renovation process. In working with Mission Critical Partners and Schrader Group, 
what we are learning is this is what um, all 911 centers that don't build from the ground up are, go are going through this same process. So it's not a reason not to go down this road, it's just a reason to know that there's a few extra things that we'll have to do to this building. And I also have Harry Petoni from uh, Schrader Group is on the call by Zoom if we have questions for him. So getting into the cost of this, this is a little bit hard to see, but you've got this in front of you. So the cost for full renovation, this is if we were to put everybody in here that we have talked about. So you've got the building is listed at 7.299 million, so right at 7.3 million dollars. The renovation for everything comes in around 18 million. So that's a total cost of 25 million. If you look over to the side, our funding sources, we have our $15 million grant. We feel that the E911 board will provide reimbursement for about $2.2 million in expenses. And then that 10-year lease amount that we currently have is around $4.2 million. So that gives us um, funding sources of about $21 million. So that leaves us short, just under $4 million. If you were to look at the 20 year on the lease, that provides us an additional 5.6 million. Um, so it does cover the entire cost of it, but it takes 20 years to get there. So what we did was went back to them and said, okay, what if we were to just do a partial renovation and we were to only renovate right now for 911, make that the bulk of our renovation so that we could have that co-located center. In doing that, the price of the building stays the same, but the renovation costs go to uh, 9.89, almost 9.9 .9 million, so that puts you at 17 million. You've still got your grant at 15 million, and we feel that the 911 board will reimburse the 2.2. So that covers the cost of the building if we were to do this partial renovation. In addition, you still have that $4.2 million that will come in from the state lease. That money could be put into a reserve for future renovations on that building. Um, so that's at 10 years, and if you were to look at the 20 year, you've still got the additional $5.6 million. Um, so basically, you would come in making a profit on it. Um, so that's where we are. So if we were to do this renovation and we co-located 911 and Burlington and Alamance, we would still go through this process of engineering or the process of design. We feel like we could get more in there for this cost than what we're showing right now. When we when they did the initial projections for cost, they also had a huge contingency in there of about $2 million. The other thing is that when we talked about um, putting the two 911 centers in, we were talking about building them completely out for future. So we've projected extra seats, they've projected extra seats, but if we were to go in and right size that and put it together like it is for enough space for them for right now, then we could cut that cost by, by about another one and a half million. So we would have the space, we just would not be buying all the furnishings, we would not put all the initial technology in, but we would have it there for future growth. So you'd be investing in the future, but you'd be investing as you grow instead of us putting all of our money in, going in 10 years we're gonna fill this up, or 20 years we're gonna fill this up we'll just right size it. So there's opportunities to cut these costs some so that we can get the rest of our partners in there. And that's what we'll go do as we go through this planning process. And if you do that, eventually we're gonna have to have one system, or at least hopefully. I mean, it makes no sense to have two separate systems. Uh, if we go statewide, which is the Viper system, then you're gonna have to buy a lot of new equipment anyway. Is that correct? So for the city of Burlington, yes. Well, yeah. and update hours is certainly not going to stay current. So our, well, our, so our radio systems are in place. 
and we have a CAD system, which is the software that runs everything down there, that would not change. So that in Burlington, we're already working with Burlington on a project to keep that the same. So you're really talking about the changes um, that Burlington would need to make to get, get on the Viper system. All right. Mm -hmm. About, what was it, about two, two and a half, maybe three years ago, we put an, approved putting in a new Viper tower on the north side of the county. Mm -hmm. is, and is that done yet? Were, were yes. we dealing with some issue with some birds? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. uh, yeah, Birds didn't sign the contract. <laughs> Don't we need yeah, another right. power in the southern part of the county? Uh, you know, do we are we having sheriff? Are we having problems with oh, communication yeah. in the southern part of the county? Wait a minute, Dexter. Do you have something to add? Right. The, the, you're speaking about the all spray. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's for our BHF backup. That has nothing to do with. With uh, Viper. Okay. So okay. Viper is a totally different system. The VHF is the system that the county owns, the county maintains, and it is a backup that is ready in case Viper goes down. Okay. Plus, we dispatch, uh, we page out our EMS and fire personnel on it as well. So I've got all of our emergency management, <laughs> our emergency <laughs> here, and they are all just dying. All of our heroes. I just want you guys to know if you have questions, they're all back there. Yancey's about to jump out of his seat. I'm not sure what he has to add, but yeah, he's got there's something. One I'd like to try to clarify a little bit on the radio systems. Uh, actually, having two radio yeah. systems coming into that one center is a plus because there is times when radio systems go down. Uh, the Tron has done it with Graham a time or two. We've had some issues a time or two where we would have certain towers down on the Viper system, but having two radio systems coming into one center is actually a plus. Uh, their dispatches all run, will be run the same, mm -hmm. uh, which that would clear up some of the issues that you're having with uh, the call to <coughs> one center, had to be transferred to another. It would come into one center there, so with the way their technology runs from their dispatch, they could actually, it would take some work with them getting their procedures done and all, but you would make one call to one center and then it would go to whoever was sending out that call, uh, roll over to the dispatch for the fire, whichever, just like you would in a normal center. So I've been told that Viper can't, if you're on Viper, you can't communicate with you, you Tron. Can't, if you're on Tron, you can't. You can't directly, but by having those two systems, if one system goes down, then you can switch over. Because in my radio, I can switch to the Burlington with the Tron system. Can any of our other agencies do that? All, all yes. of us have that capability. We just can't talk on both of them. They don't communicate together at the same time. But by having two systems, it actually gives you a backup that you can switch over. You just got to know you need to move. Yeah, you yeah. just have, have to move. The agency them. has to build out a template that has the Tron radio systems in it. And if they do, um, then they can just switch over and monitor if they're on a mutual aid call. They have that ability, the interoperability. But it does take a little work on whoever's using the radio to know which button he needs to turn to get on the right channel sometimes. But that would actually be a plus by having the two radio systems in there. I think by having everyone in the same room, your dispatch uh, issues will clear up a lot because, uh, Stephen, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, they, they're using the same software for dispatch, correct? Mm -hmm. So they could talk on the consoles in the, in the dispatch and say. So. Okay. Well, see the way he lays it out makes sense. <laughs> Looking at it the, the way I right. was, yeah, see, it was like, you, you, got a, you made a good point having two radio systems. One goes down, at least you have access to another. Yeah, and to that makes sense. Yeah, and to change out one of the radio systems, you're probably looking, the last figures I heard, for a county that was looking at doing that was somewhere about 24 to 28 million dollars. Mm -hmm. Explain to me why Graham police officers are talking to me about we can't talk to Alabama County. It's probably just in their template that they uh, they're not they're not switching over. Normal conversations they will talk to Burlington people. The sheriff's department talks to sheriff. But if they run a call together, most time they will go to some type of a channel where they can communicate. Just not what I'm hearing from officers and uh, 
Mm -hmm. Maybe they the should be here to tell us in person sure. themselves. That yeah, always works some, better. Yeah, maybe a programming issue with the radios themselves. Um, we've seen that in the past when we've had, had some events. Um, Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Well, navigate uh, the way the radios are programmed. Um, I'm not sure which <coughs> vendor they use. Um, if they use somebody in house, but we we've, we've been to some of the events where. The radios weren't getting out, um, but it was based on how they were set up. I, I had a I had a Graham officer tell me that if he was in a pursuit situation that went outside the county, he'd lose communication. Maybe he doesn't know that he won't, but right now he thinks he will. So and that, that's correct. As soon as they get out of the reach of the Tron Tower, I think it's the 157. If they were chasing. Uh, they they lose all radio um, communications back to the Tron radio system. How long did the county go on that chase one time? Well, we chased oh, almost probably halfway from here to the beach um, because Viper statewide they just it repeatedly hits right. the tower. It, it would require that officer to switch channels on his radio. He would have that capability, but he would probably have to switch channels on his radio. Mm -hmm. And I know Greg Fire. They actually have a channel in their same band on the radio where all they have to do is switch down, down two channels on the radio and it goes over to one of our channels. They well, use our channel. Kind of sounds like it might be a good idea for a county management, county emergency management, to have a joint meeting with a variety of the with all the agencies to make sure everybody knows what they can do. Yeah, we've had those in the past. It's just one of those, it's an uh, issue that. You had to keep working on con constantly to make sure you got it uh, laid out. And I think by having everyone working out of one center, it will help a lot. We'll be able to come together if we're having an issue and figure out how to get around it. Mr. Uh, yes. A couple questions. First mm -hmm. of all, I, I certainly don't think any of these issues are going to improve if we don't Correct. create this, this emergency services center. So yeah. I think we need to start moving forward on this. I do have a couple of questions. Sure. Could you go to page three of the... Uh, presentation please the emergency services center list of what's included yes so what of those as we've been talking a lot about 911 but there's more to this building than 911 right. if we go to the partial renovation option what of those bullet points do we lose so um, on this bullet point you've got emergency management storage we are not going to have that in this building regardless because the state has leased that out the piece that we're going to lose is an enhanced emergency operations center. So we've got a small emergency operations center over um, at the in the basement of Family Justice Center. In on Martin. On Martin Street. If we do the partial, I believe they can pull all of that stuff over. You're not going to have an enhanced center. You're not going to have new equipment. You're just going to be bringing your stuff over. So I think all of the offices can still come over. You can have some form of emergency operations center. You're just not going to have a huge center where everybody can come. Um, all of the municipalities, all the partners can come in the event of an emergency. We've already got that right now. We've got a small space. They come and we're on top of each other. Ideally, what you'd want is a nicer operations center where all of your partners can come in in the event of an uh, in the in an event and they've all got room to spread out they're in the same room they're still talking but they've got their own equipment their own stations they kind of have that now but then half of them have to sit at a big table in the middle of it so i think we can replicate that and then if we could hold some of that lease money we could renovate that as we as that fund grows. Right. The physical space for the oper the emergency operations center would be in this building. Yes. It's just what's included in it. Correct. That you could later upgrade to the fuller vision that you're describing. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Is and that's where we would like to get to. Is there anything else that you'd lose? No. Everything else is going to be the same. You're going to have your emergency management offices would be over there. Um, a scaled down EOC. Your fire marshal's office would be there. EMS administration, that's just a few offices, and then um, your 911 centers, Burlington and Alamance. What, what is the, um, what's the confidence level of the funding sources from the E911 board? E, yeah. Very, very confident in that. Stephen, do you want to talk to that? Yeah, at the end of the year, um, 
we there's a there's several things technology wise that go into the 911 fund that are uh, funds that um, are allowable expenditures. Anything where uh, type of technology or call taking positions are eligible expenses. So say we move in to this building, the seat allow or the state allows us ten seats. So everything for the ten seats. The, the CAD consoles. Can everybody hear what he's saying? Yeah. Okay. So the CAD, the CAD consoles, radio, everything is reimbursable by the state mm -hmm. for those ten seats. Now, anything additional would be out of the county's pocket. Uh, I think Burlington seat, their approved count is four or five, so the state would allow and pay for everything for those seats. But anything in addition to would come out of Burlington's I guess, general fund. Mm -hmm. But the state reimburses at the end of every fiscal year, so we pay, and they just reimburse us for the eligible expenses. And is that reimbursed? When in the project is that reimbursed? It, it at, would the be end, at the end, or at the end of the year, yeah, after the expenses yeah. are incurred. Okay. And how? What's the vision for how long this renovation is going to take? So I think it will take um, probably 12 months for the actual design and 12 months for the re remodeling renovation so you're talking maybe january february of 25. okay which wow. gives us time to have further discussions with burlington exactly and EMS about mm -hmm. creating we certainly need to create a system that's as seamless as possible mm -hmm. uh, and so that gives us time to continue to do that um, so all you're asking for is a approval of the, of so the purchase one, of the building yes. for 7.2 million dollars 7.299 $2.299 million, I make yep. that motion. And I want to also ask that we authorize the county manager to execute documents saying, uh, and complete this process. Uh, that is, that, yes, I'll amend the motion to include that. Okay. And the motion should also identify the funding source, which will be the state grant that the county received. So amended. But that's not all of the money. Right, results. that would be the purchase of, of <clears throat> about $7.29 And we have the ability to pay for this over time. So we have... Like when we have different things that come up, I'm just saying what you said, one year for, um, what was the word? Uh, so right, uh, yeah, for design. for design. Design. So right now, we what we're asking is for the purchase of the building, which would be the 7.299. Then after we get into design we'll come back and ask for the approval of the cost of the design and then when we get ready to build we'll come back so that the remainder the 7.7 .7 will be sitting in a fund till we're ready to come back and ask okay. for the rest of it that's what i'm saying we ha we're going to have some time before exactly, the yes. mm -hmm. gauntlet comes yep. down and everything has to be paid for. and right now that money's sitting in a fund and it's gaining interest and we have about um 283,000 we've earned in interest okay. that would go towards Good this stuff. project yes. I like it already. <laughs> Just one. Just delay it ten years. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Let Susan work her magic. Yeah. She'll have to pay for it. We sure do have a lot of funds that have a lot of money in these funds. We do. It's interesting. I I just I just want to make sure I'm hearing you correctly. You want to buy this building, and you're already going to scale it down. Is that no, what I heard? That's not. Ex it is kind of what you heard. The building will allow us growth for 20 years. What I'm saying is what I want to scale down is what we initially put into the building. So instead of building out for uh, 15 consoles for Alamance County, we would build out for 10, which is what we currently use. There will be space to add the other five in the future. But that's not a decision we need to make right now. We don't, right. Right, but I understand that and I appreciate that, but I'm hearing how dire straits this is that we get everybody under one roof right now because mm -hmm. of communication issues or whatever that looks like. And um, I, I just, I'm just curious as to, we're already talking, we, we want to get it, but we're not going to have exactly what we need, but we're going to get in that in 20 years. If we need it, we need it right now, not 20 years if it's life and death. That's See, the way I look at it. You don't need all of those stations right now. Mm -hmm. You're going to need them as your population grows. So what I'm saying is there's an opportunity to cut costs by just putting in there the number of stations you need right now. Those are the number of stations that would be reimbursable by the E911 board. 
if we go ahead and add those extra stations, we can do it out of this money, but it it won't be toward it won't be reimbursable. So that's what I'm saying is we build for what inside what we need right now. But these are conversations we can have as we go through the design process as well. And let me touch on the design process. Are those design processes going to be for 15 places? We're not going to just have 10. them look at both. Because say I don't yeah. want to do, do this, and then like in a year or two, we're having to tear down a wall and do whatever and remodel no. and spend all this extra money. There would not be remodeling included in this. What we would have them do is they would create the space large enough for that number of consoles. We just wouldn't use all the space initially. It wouldn't be tearing down the walls as we build on. But again, that's we'll go yeah. through that in the design through that exercise in the design process. I'd like to second Mr. Turner's motion. Uh, that we purchased the 780 Plantation Drive at a cost of $7,299,000 uh, from the funding from the State Capital Infrastructure Project Fund and authorize the county manager to execute all documents related to the purchase. Mr. Turner, did I accurately? That, that is accurate. Yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. I second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Any opposed? Yeah, it's unanimous. You got your motion. All right, thank you. <laughs> you can continue on if you like. But <laughs> <coughs> Ms. Hook, did you have other comments you wanted to make? I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'm used to it. I'm sorry. It's all right. Ms. Thompson. No, it's already voted. It doesn't matter. I'm just, I'm just going to say this. We're spending a whole lot of money, and the majority of people sitting in this room are here because of their tax eval, and we need to really think about that. That's reality. That's all I'm saying. That's it. Okay, I've got the agenda that was printed out for me last week. I'm not sure. I think we moved things around to have the uh, county manager's report next. Is that correct? I think we're moving item seven down to below number current number nine. That's fine. Okay. That's no. from the attorney. Sure. Then let's have the county manager's report. Sure. Just a couple of items, commissioners. Um, the negotiations with Meridian are going well. They are expecting a traffic impact study from DOT within the next couple of weeks and so we wanted to bring that item back for you once the study had been completed so that you could have all of the information in making a decision so kind of pushing pause at the moment waiting till we get that study and then you'll have it on your agenda for further discussion we also are doing uh, another update on the debt affordability model that you saw at your retreat so we'll like to bring back an update to that at your next meeting and then we'll still have a discussion about the courthouse project uh, and some decisions that would need to be made in light of the model so those are still forthcoming and thank you county commissioners comments thank you county attorney's comments Good morning, board. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11A3, I would ask the board to move into closed session and consult with an attorney employed or retained by a public body in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege between the attorney and the public body. The attorney will advise the board on ongoing legal matters, including Allison et al. v. Allen et al. and NAACP et al. v. Alamance County et al. I don't anticipate any action after closed session. Motion to approve. In discussion, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed is unanimous. We're in closed session. We have concluded the closed session. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs>
Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.